Ariel Hawani in Cleveland, Ohio, alongside Tyron Woodley's head trainer, the great Gerald Tucker, who of course is here to corner his man on Sunday night as he goes up against Jake Paul. A lot to talk to you about, Gerald. Thank you for the time. Uh, I have to ask you about Thursday and the aftermath of Thursday. Press conference, a lot of emotion, family gets involved. Did you see any difference in Tyron afterwards? Has it become more personal, perhaps more emotional? You don't want to fight emotionally, but do you feel a sort of change in him after what happened at the press conference? Uh, right away, there was a, um, a change, and um, I had to go over there and calm him down, try to get him back to where we were, because we, um, we're, in, we're aligned perfectly for, for victory, beautiful victory. So I don't want them to get off of that because that's what they were trying to do. That, and that was um, expected um, on our side. So um, uh, just making sure that, that he's still playing chess, you know, and uh, he is. Um, but it took, it took a few minutes to um, calm him down because, you know, moms, um, you don't really bring moms into stuff. You know, that's some, there's got to be a, long, a line drawn, and um, they didn't. You know, they just wiped it away and just did whatever. And... Um, so we're prepared from now on because we got to, you know, be in their presence a couple more times before fight time. So we're prepared for what else may come. But, um, yeah, I definitely had to calm him down. And um, I had to make a phone call to Floyd um, because he's he's a, a master of not letting uh, emotions or uh, out things outside the ring or even things inside the ring, like, um, dictate how he's going to perform physically. So um, I made the phone call to Floyd. Floyd got on the phone with him, and they um, went and talked for 10 minutes. And um, I seen a different really? Tyron come back. Yeah. What did Floyd say? Uh, I wasn't there. You know, okay. I let them do that. But um, I'm, I'm pretty sure he said the same thing I said, you know, okay. that, that, that that's expected. Calm down. Um, stay true to what you've been doing and what you know you need to do. And um, don't get distracted because that's just a, a derailment. So, Are you worried he's going to fight emotionally out there on Sunday? Not at all. Not anymore. Now, right at the moment, yeah. I was thinking that. But I, I like to fast forward and um, – to kind of think, bring things back to where I wanted to be. So I fast forwarded, you know, into that moment where he was fighting mostly and I pulled him back out to where we we're gonna be, um, where we were before we, that even happened. When did you first start working with Tyron? Um, we started working um, maybe seven weeks ago, I believe. Okay, so you never worked with him in MMA? No, While he was a fighter there? Not, not at all. This was, um, as soon as you seen me and Floyd in it, well, we might have posted the video a little later, maybe a week or something later, but yeah, it was, it's been about a little less than two months. As you know, MMA fighting different than boxing, the stance, the, the attack. You can't just be a traditional boxer. There's so much more that you have to worry about. Did you feel like when you were first working with him, did you feel like, man, we almost have to like reprogram his brain? This is a wrestler who obviously became a great striker, but he's not a traditional boxer. Was that tough at the beginning to try to change everything that he had been doing for the past decade plus? Uh, not at all, man. Um, I didn't um, think that at all. And um, I love challenges. So if I did think it, I pushed it out real quick and said, we're going to get the win and this is how we're going to do it. But um, he had a great foundation set by um, Coach Eric Brown. Shout out to him. Um, they started working together in 2008. And um, they worked in um, uh, a lot in his last past fights. And um, I think his last three or four fights in the MMA and UFC. And um, so he got them together um, quite well. And uh, hats off to him again. And um, so, yeah, we didn't have to do too much. We just had to polish them up and um, come up with a game plan. Any uh, hints on what the game plan might look like? Um, a beautiful performance. That's oh, all yeah. I say, man. I never, I never reveal, man. Sure. Yeah, we'll see, you know, fight night. You know, anything can happen in boxing. So, um, you know, I'm aware of that. And, um, but, yeah, we, we, got, um, we did everything we needed to do to get um, a beautiful performance out of Tyron. Can I ask what impresses you most about his boxing skills? Um, uh, I, I, I would say a one in the two, but I like him equally. Um, he's um, he's a sponge. He's he's super passionate about it. He's more passionate about the the sport than world champions out there that I, that I've come across. And um, his defense, his defense is amazing. Man. He has great defense. The betting line continues to grow against him. It started off as him being a favorite. Now. Jake being a favorite, and, and, and it has continued that way. And as the days get closer to the fight, Tyron's a bigger underdog. Does this surprise you? This is Tyron Woodley, one of the greatest UFC champions of all time. You know, in my opinion, top four welterweight ever in the history of MMA, in the history of the UFC. And he's an underdog against Jake Paul, who's 3-0 and fighting, you know, Nate Robinson and whatnot. Does this shock you? Um, it doesn't shock me, man. You can, you can never, like... Um see what the the betting stuff is gonna how it's gonna go so um it's just another one of those fights where somebody's gonna make a whole lot of money mm -hmm. now what about jake what do you think of his boxing skills as a trainer as a brilliant mind in this game are you impressed with him uh i am impressed with jake to be three and oh and to come from youtube um uh like i said before um i watched him um 
and I was hoping that he would, um, you know, succeed in the sport. It's just I just I'm, I'm really surprised that they took this fight, man. Like I now and um. Um, see down and give you the jewel. So you could see in other interviews I've done in the past before, you know, I even met Tyron. I was saying that, um, and then they announced the fight. I was like, oh man, I told Floyd, I said, why did they make this fight, man? They're messing up our money because he can't beat Tyron. I said this before I met Tyron, and now that he has me and Floyd and Pedro, it's 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 it, nothing need to be said. Nothing need to be said. Is Floyd gonna be there on Sunday? Um, I'm pretty sure he is, but um, you know Floyd uh, has, a, has a crazy lifestyle, sure. so um, he just bought a, a great big old house in Miami. He's uh, furnishing right now, and he has a big old yacht in the back. So you know that's it's kind of hard to pull someone away from, but sure. um, I think he'll show up. If he's here, will he be in the corner or no? Um, not in the corner. We have uh, me and Pedro in the corner, and then um, we got uh, Eric Brown is also going to be in the corner with us as working as a cut man and a third coach. Um, so um, I, he won't be in the corner, but um, I'm sure he'll be close by. Um, where he can tell us what to do. And could I ask before I let you go, in your opinion, obviously he's such a young kid and he's only been there, you know, a minute here, a minute there, not a lot of tape on him, but what's the key to defeating Jake Paul in your opinion? Um, the key to beating Jake is just, um, well, see, for me it's different, man. I had a whole lot of amateur experience and I uh, retired undefeated as a pro, so I see right through it. And um, But for somebody who may not see right through it, um, being in tip-top shape is the number one priority, and we're there. And then you take away their strengths. Um, he has a decent jab. He has a great overhand. He's been beating guys with, with not, you know, not too much experience. He's been beating them with. So you just take away what you've seen him do great or good, and um, you go from there. And if he has anything, he brings anything else to the table, the coaches will, and the fighter will see and um, will adjust. Obviously, you want an early night, but I'm wondering if, you know, you take him to deep waters. He's never been there before, right? He's never sat on the stool in the sixth round and wondered, you know, what do I have to do to get rid of this guy? That probably would work. If you look into a crystal ball and say, oh, this fight's going to the six, seven, eight, you probably like your chances, I would imagine, right? Yeah, our, our chances are great in every round, but um, it's, it's even better the later the fight goes on because um, we, we got a dog, man. We got an animal over here, and... Um, He's going he's gonna to be biting and barking the whole night, man. Can't wait for it. Thank you for the time. Good luck to the team on Sunday. Appreciate you.